Well, former FBI agent Bobby Chacona and criminal defense attorney Brian Claypool join me here in the studio, as well as clinical and forensic psychologist Judy Ho. Welcome to you all. It is good to have you with us. Uh, Brian, if I could start with you, uh, the U.S. Olympic Committee has put out a statement. It came out just a short time ago apologizing to Rio, obviously the Olympic host, and the people of Brazil, and also confirming that there was an act of vandalism by one of the athletes. But the statement also goes on to say this. Take a listen. An argument ensued between the athletes and two armed gas station security staff who displayed their weapons, ordered the athletes from their vehicle, and demanded the athletes provide a monetary payment. Once the security officials received money from the athletes, the athletes were allowed to leave. The statement appears to be trying to walk a very fine line here between the story from the Brazilians and from the athletes. But where does this leave everything legally? Well, legally, Ryan Lochte can still be charged with one. I've got four crimes sitting in front of me. False reporting of a crime, false self-accusation. By the way, that's three months to two years. Mm -hmm. Perjury, possibly. As a witness, if he lied during a police investigation, he might be charged with that. But there's a big one nobody's talking about. It's a crime called giving rise to institution of police investigation. Basically, that's saying that somebody else committed a crime and you knew mm -hmm. that that person was innocent. Mm -hmm. that, that carries a penalty of two to eight years. You and I are talking about an apology, an apology by the U.S. Olympic Committee. I'm talking about crimes that may have been committed and why didn't our government or this committee say, hey, let's see how the judicial process carries out and if Brian Lochte did something wrong, he should suffer the consequences. Why didn't they do that? Mm -hmm. I think it's pathetic that they didn't. This is worth pointing out that uh, uh, the, the USA swimming team, uh, they have also put out a statement, the USA swimming authorities, um, and in part their statement says um, that this whole situation is drawing attention away from Team USA's incredible accomplishments in the water and by other athletes across the Olympic Games is upsetting. Uh, the athletes and their remarkable story should be the focus, is, is what this swimming executive, the USA Swimming Executive Director said. Uh, I, I want to bring in um, Bobby at this point. You have lived in Brazil. You know, as you said, um, the, the, the situation regarding street crime. You, you have a great understanding of it. How surprised are you, though, that Brazilian authorities are putting so much time and resources into getting to the bottom of all of this situation? Well, I'm not surprised at all. And I think that a lot of it has to do with the lying of, of Ryan Lochte and some of his teammates initially. I mean, when you're investigating a crime like this, you, you seem to want to get to the bottom of it as quickly as possible. And when you have so-called victims making it much harder for you to do it turns them around and maybe it looks like they're the perpetrator i guess i ask you the question because there have been brazilians quoted in media saying they wish the brazilian authorities would be this uh committed to solving issues that they face as local residents as they are in this situation well i i i kind of i take that with a grain of salt i mean if you look at the videotape this is clearly was an incident where they, they urinated on the on, on the property they may have damaged the property a little bit there was no uh, there was no person who was a victim of this crime, it wasn't a violent crime. Um, so the actions of these guys, I think, uh, the night of the, the incident itself, I think pales in comparison with their actions afterwards, mm -hmm. of lying about it and making public statements about it and going on and disparaging, uh, you know, Brazil as a society, I mm -hmm. think. And so I think that I think that, that is, is much worse than, than and that, that's what needs to be corrected. Uh, uh, to that point, Judy, let me bring you in here. Uh, you heard uh, uh, Bobby say what, you know, the Brazilian authorities are saying, you know, there have been multiple lies here. Um, and, you know, it has raised many questions about Ryan Lochte himself. Uh, and one of the, the, the most, I guess, one of the key ones is, why would anyone lie about something like this? Well, Aisha, I think that Ryan really was trying to save face. I, it all started, actually, when he told this lie just to his mother. But then when his mother posted on social media, he then was the one who actually car got carried away. He amped it up further, and he began to really not just embellish details. He just started to make things up where he was showing himself in a very positive light. So, you know, he gave accounts of the fact that all of his teammates got down on the floor when the gun was being brandished, except he, he was the person who really stood up and said, no, I'm not going to get down. I didn't do anything wrong. And so it really became this thing of feeding his own image, feeding his ego. And it just got out of hand. And at that point, it was so much in the public eye that instead of just backing off and saying, you know what, I'm sorry, I was a little bit shocked that night and none of that happened. 
he just kept going and running with it. And, and this just shows the type of behavior that Ryan has paralleled in the past. He does have a long history of behaviors that sort of are irresponsible. He's gotten away with a lot of things and he's never had to be held accountable until now. And to Brian's point, maybe he needs to be held accountable now so that he can learn this mm. lesson. I think it's interesting, Judy, that we have some people saying, you know, they're just kids uh, as they describe the situation and their antics. But to put it in context, he's a 32 year old man. Right. Absolutely. He's 32. You know, his teammates are a lot younger than he is. They're about 15 to 10 years younger than he is. And really, he was almost like the ringleader here. And he was the person who actually started giving these statements in the first place without consulting with his teammates. And that's why all the stories didn't corroborate. Um, every interview he gave, there was some other discrepancy, which is why he eventually got caught. All right. Uh, Bobby, to go to you. Um how much of this is being driven by national pride here? I mean, uh, how much of it is what is well, fueling I'm not sure the actions? It's, it's, you know, the Brazilians are, are very resilient people, and I'm not sure that uh, the general population this is being driven, because I can tell you their desire mm -hmm. is for the, ne the last, next three days to be focused on the games. Mm -hmm. Their desire is not to have this case be what people are talking about, about Rio 2016, and that's exactly what's happening. The media has taken this story and run with it, and I think that, you you know, it's my hope, and I have a vested interest as, as my wife's the executive producer of these games, and she has a great team, and we've had some amazing athletic performances, and I think the Brazilian people want the story to be about these games and not about these individuals. Mm. Uh, Brian, um, this gas station video, that's kind of taken center stage now, right? Um, that's what everyone is scrutinizing to try and piece together what did or didn't happen. but. The athletes, as we heard Nick Payton Walsh say, uh, have said there's several minutes missing from the actual footage. What? Your reaction to that? What's and missing? Were they, were, were they peeing somewhere else as well? <laughs> you know, we missed that too. I mean, there's nothing positive that can come from these missing minutes in the video, trust me. And I find it also offensive that we're that we're trying to make this argument about well should the security guards have pulled their gun mm -hmm. i was in here a couple weeks ago we had some protests going right. on and we had our own police officers for example in dallas at a protest having their weapons pulled and pointing it at mm -hmm. people peacefully protesting mm -hmm. how ironic that we're now saying oh these security guards shouldn't have pulled their guns on these irresponsible athletes uh, um, bobby you know brazil so to that point the pulling of the gun is that extraordinary? Not down there, no. And, and in fact, I, I'm not sure it would be here in this case. These guys were clearly, they had committed an act that needed, this is his job, is to protect his employers. These are off-duty officers who are armed. And, and these guys were basically trying to flee a crime. And so it was quite appropriate for him to pull his weapon, get them out of the car, sit them down on the curb like you saw in some of that video. I think it was perfectly appropriate. Yeah. Uh, Judy, um this kind of episode, you know, the embellishment, Ryan Lochte um, appearing, um, you know, various shows, speaking to various hosts about the situation. You know, some might say, you know, this is very much a symptom of this fame obsessed culture that we live in. That's right. This is a really kind of an example of attention getting behavior, you know, and he's actually being reinforced for it because then more people want to interview him, more people want to talk to him. People are sympathizing about this incident that he went through and now they see him as a hero because he actually tried to stand up for himself and his teammates and so it is partially in the culture it's also because of the fact that he's been in the public eye for so long and the more he embellishes sometimes the more attention he gets and so he's been rewarded for this behavior in the past and perhaps he just thought that this time he would be rewarded too mm. uh, Judy appreciate that uh, Brian um, Lochte here in the United States, the other two are on their way, Gunnar Benz and Jack Conga. So if the Brazilian authorities decide that they do want to press charges, I mean, how are they going to get them back? That's going to be incredibly difficult. What do you see as the next steps here? Well, the first, the first question you have to ask is, will Ryan Lochte, he's really the target here, will he be charged with a crime? Will he be indicted? If he's indicted, I personally think he should be indicted. You do think I he should think be indicted? I think he should be indicted. There have to be consequences for these actions. I mean, you saw the video, that was 6 a.m. He said at 4 a.m. they left this bar and, the, and, and then we, we forgot to talk about his first story. Mm. Oh, a car comes up and these Side people come out and they're, and they're pretending to be police officers. What happened to that? So this is a very, very serious act, and I think it's a crime mm -hmm. based on what we've seen. So if prosecutors decide to indict, then you get into the issue, can you extradite Ryan Lochte? 
two quick answers. One, if he's committed perjury, he's lied as a witness during a police investigation, you can extradite. But what a lot of folks aren't talking about is you don't need a treaty. We have a treaty, mm -hmm. but you don't need a treaty to extradite somebody. So, so the Brazilian government would then negotiate with the United States to see whether the U.S. would agree to it. Uh, I know I said last word, but Bobby, I want to just ask you yes, no question. Yes, no answers to both questions. Do you think he should be charged? Yes or no? No. Okay, so the question of whether or not he's indicted is a moot point at that point. Uh, my thanks to all three of you. Thank you for the lively conversation. We yeah. shall see how it plays out in the hours ahead. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Judy. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. You. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right, time for a quick break.